Welcome back. We took a very short break to, you know, punctuate at least the day with some small musical interludes. But we are now back. My name is Valentine or at Color Me Val on everything, but of importance. At Y254 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. That's how you interact with us today and any other day. Hashtag of a day is Y in the morning. Now, we just got done with a very interesting conversation with one Stephanie Yetta. And if you missed it, don't panic. You can go on our YouTube channel and do the thing. Now, allow me to allow my guests to introduce themselves and we'll have a very intimate conversation about the future of businesses or entrepreneurship in a hall in the digital space. All right, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you promised me a smile. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of smiles. <laughs> okay, L allow me to begin with the lady. Hi, what's your name? Hi, uh, I'm Christine McKenna. Okay. Yeah. And you are? I'm a media strategist and a media buyer. Uh-huh. Yeah. What does a media strategist do? Uh, basically, you create uh, digital marketing strategies uh, for brands uh, on uh, social platforms mm -hmm. yeah and you are sir my name is kevin yes, yes kevin. gashiri uh -huh. with love uh -huh. from kampala uh -huh. doing business wow. in kenya okay yeah all right and you are uh, i help out at uh, onesha mm -hmm. uh, in charge of uh, business strategy mm -hmm. yes and client relations all right would you please tell us a little bit about onesha onesha is a marketplace mm -hmm. where we connect uh, creatives with uh, skills in the creative industry mm -hmm. to businesses that require those skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what kind, okay, creatives, we are talking about photographers, we're talking about illustrators. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, the creative space is uh, wide uh -huh. and it is growing. And usually uh, companies normally, if they want more than one solution, mm -hmm. they have to talk to Mary and Jane and That's Kimani. And then if they are unhappy with what Mary did, now the business has to go back to the market and find for a replacement. Mm -hmm. So now we make it easier by businesses coming to Onesha and then Onesha sourcing the different creatives who would work on a project. Mm -hmm. And so the client deals with Onesha and then Onesha deals with the creatives. Okay. Yes. Before I get to your question, does it take away from the process? Because I've, I've, at one point in my life, I had interned at a particular agency, okay. and I understand clients can be very demanding, to say the least, the least, the absolute least. So that back and forth, is it done with the creative or with Onesha? We have merged into a different solution profile because different clients also want different projects done. Mm -hmm. There are some clients who want somebody to do for me a logo and once the logo is done they don't need the creative. Mm -hmm. So there are clients who would want that particular one-time assistance. You also have clients who require a project. We're going to need some creative solutions for three months and then after three months the project goes down. Mm -hmm. So then how do they uh, get this talent from the market and they get a uh, very uh, well-refined uh, uh, talent, but also at a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. So there are other players in the market, and our service complements the existing players. Oh, yes. Well, that sounds fun. Yes. Now, how do you come in as a strategist? Uh, no, I come in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I come in uh, as a, a creative on mm -hmm. the Onesha platform. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, when the uh, clients approach Onesha. Onesha then comes to me as a digital strategist or a media buyer and asks me, we have a brief, uh, we've been given a brief by a certain uh, company, uh, how, how do we execute this? Create for me a digital strategy uh, for executing what the uh, company needs. Mm -hmm. And then from there now, once the strategy is ready, you present it to the client and then now the client uh, either approves or denies or maybe asks for any changes in the strategy. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you get a lot of the back and forth yes. with, with the with the client. Yes. Is is there a point where you've changed creatives on the same job? Yes. Yes. It happens. Does um, it get messy? It happened, and it's we ex as it happens because sometimes you get a client who doesn't know what they want. Which is often the case. Clients don't know what they want. Yes. Or maybe they know what they want, but they didn't procure it in the right manner mm. and so the first creative who comes on board once they do their first piece when it's taken back to the client client says no i didn't ask for this and they're like oh you didn't give us a good brief mm -hmm. and some situations it's possible for 
the, create, the creative to be changed, which helps us to give satisfaction to the client, mm -hmm. exactly the solution that we promised to give them. Mm -hmm. That you're not doing your logo with Mary, you're doing your logo with whoever it is you'll need to get to give you the logo that you like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they allowed to ask for a specific creative or is that kind of... Um, mainly because of the history of our past clients, um, we have portfolios and so uh -huh. it's possible for them to choose from a portfolio and say, do you have somebody who's worked in the manufacturing industry? Mm -hmm. So now we have that capability to attach a creative who is relevant to the client. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I remember this one did for me that other job yes. the other time. Yes. Quite smart yes. 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 Do yes. we want this one? Yes. All right. So then okay. we do the matching. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Christine, I want to take us back a little bit to 2020 when, when COVID did the thing and then a lot of uh, the things that we had to do physically were now transferred to the digital space. How do you see us in the next two, three years? If, if since then we are where we are right now, people are probably even still working at home, from home rather. So where do you see uh, our spaces as entrepreneurs, as, as companies, as businesses? Okay, um, so since uh, COVID hit, uh, mm. most businesses uh, decided to uh, do most of the work remotely mm -hmm. uh, and then once uh, COVID started um, uh, slowly dying out, uh, people will choose either hybrid uh, type of model, mm -hmm. working model or uh, just uh, entirely remaining remotely. Mm -hmm. And you'd find that uh, if businesses were remaining remotely, they had already created a good uh, working model mm -hmm. uh, where uh, all employees are able and disciplined to work remotely. Mm -hmm. And then there's also businesses w which uh, prefer the hybrid where at least you come into the office mm -hmm. and then you're able to create that uh, culture, th team culture, mm -hmm. while people are in the office. Mm -hmm. So I think moving forward in future, most uh, roles which are, are basically technical mm -hmm. will be done uh, remotely uh, since um, uh, as you can see in the uh, in our Kenyan market at the moment, uh, mm -hmm. most uh, young people, uh, Gen Z and millennials, mm -hmm. to, they prefer to find work uh, in uh, remote places in global global platforms such mm -hmm. as uh, Fiverr, mm -hmm. Upwork, mm -hmm. uh, Remote.io, mm -hmm. and all these platforms. So you find that most uh, young people in Kenya will actually be employed by uh, employers in different countries, mm -hmm. US, in the UK, China. Uh, and then you're just working for those companies while sit seated at home. Uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, I think for p employees, uh, if you want to find work remotely, you then have to be a very disciplined person mm -hmm. uh, and committed to, your work, to mm -hmm. your work in a way that you don't have to be supervised by your manager every other day mm -hmm. uh, to be asked for any maybe reports or uh, any, any, anything that you need to send out to your employers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kevin, how do you how do you see this transition in generations? And I'm asking you because I also I'm not as young as I look, so I'm I'm in the halfway there. I want to be a hybrid. I want to be the one who I grew up being told, you know, go to school, work hard. After that, tarmac, dogo, you know, physical presence, and then things changed. And now we have such a whole new, different version of what life was before. How is this hybrid? leaving you feeling hybrid is interesting mm -hmm. across uh whatsapp groups mm -hmm. hrs are having so many meetings really? because hrs are now alive to the fact that some of the work we needed people to come and do at the office mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be done at the office mm -hmm. and so hr is going through a lot of uh transition mm -hmm. yeah oops so someone is seeing him on tv business is calling please <laughs> uh -huh. my apologies it's okay. um yeah so the fact that hr is disrupted mm -hmm. it means maybe because of uh, the disruption of covid mm -hmm. people discovered zoom mm -hmm. you're like you don't need to come if you want to talk to your boss mm -hmm. what does the boss need to tell you mm -hmm. so you're seeing technology interfacing with how people needed to meet mm -hmm. just to dish out work i want you to call 10 people okay do you have to come to the office for you to tell me call 10 people mm -hmm. you could actually send me the list you could tell me what it is you want me to tell them mm -hmm. and then you can connect me with the next uh, step in the in the in the job industry mm -hmm. so we are seeing technology disrupting the workflow 
And what that is doing, it's bringing people of different age groups mm. to work on a project. Mm -hmm. So older people are working with younger people, younger people are also working with a bit more experienced people. So there's a lot of disruption happening in the marketplace mm -hmm. and that is very good for our industry. Yeah? Yes. I like that. Yes. Constant, Constant evolution. Yes. All right, I also want to take you a little bit back to by the way, they're famous. Don't look at him like that. But he, ah! <laughs> he was once on uh, KCP's Lion Den, I believe it was season four, episode seven, if I'm not, you know, off my rocker a little bit. However, that particular pitch, there was a question that intrigued me. Which one do you remember? The, the one I, that caught my eye was the, the difference between Onesha being a platform where creatives are given opportunities versus it's like a hand-picked number of creatives are put on this platform versus just any kind of creative being able to access this particular platform so versus 10 people can access and get jobs equally so how did that work out years later um we are uh, the difference between onesha and the platforms but that my colleague uh, mentioned mm -hmm. is that we have the advantage of local knowledge. Mm -hmm. You could go into Fiverr and pitch for a job. The person who's going to do it just has a skill. But what if you want somebody who understands Nakuru? Mm -hmm. Because the product is being, ex uh, the product is being um, used in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So you would, hey, do you also know Nakuru? Mm -hmm. You can't do that with Fiverr. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with Upwork, mm -hmm. but you can do that with Onesha. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Onesha can, when the job comes and you realize the client is in Nakuru, then you're able to share that piece of uh, uh, brief with our creatives in Nakuru. Because mm -hmm. they're going to do it at a cheaper cost. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to uh, do whatever it is with the local sensibilities mm -hmm. that uniquely puts Onesha in that particular space. Mm -hmm. So our creatives are spread across Kenya, and we are able to execute projects in different African capitals, mm -hmm. and that is what uh, makes it a, a bit unique and different mm -hmm. to the market segment that requires that solution. Mm -hmm. Yes. How far have you expanded since? Um, we have, in the recent uh, past two years, uh, opened up to the overseas market. Wow. We have a lot of Kenyans who uh, have been working either in the UK or in Dubai mm -hmm. or in the US, and they're thinking about doing businesses in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They want somebody who is in Kenya mm -hmm. to help them conceptualize it because of a process in the business called route to market. Mm -hmm. You've made your app. How do people get to know About that your app exists? Mm -hmm. And how does your app get the first 1,000 users? Mm -hmm. So working with somebody with local sensibilities is extremely important not only because of their ability to do so, mm -hmm. but because of going to the market with that exact uh, solution. So mm -hmm. that is the sort of transition we have seen uh, over the past two years. Are you proud of yourself? Ah. You should be very <laughs> we are only started. We are wow. only started. Wow. And Africa's time is now. It really is. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I like how confident and glowy he is yes. about this, this particular conversation. Yes. Let me ask you, Christine. And there's always there's always a fear that technology will wean out the need for actual presence of people. Do you think small tuna katiza job mingi sasajo, you know, one person can do this? Probably you what you can do right now, five people were doing before. Is is that a danger of that? Yes, uh, totally. Uh, as we've uh, been seeing the recent news uh, mm. about uh, chat GPT, uh, oh, which is, oh. mm. yeah, um, so just using uh, chat GPT, you're able to uh, weed out a lot of uh, job roles mm. uh, if you're basically good at using it. So, for example, in, in our digital space, uh, when you look at, uh, at the Kenyan market, you find that uh, most employers actually want someone with an all-rounded experience, mm -hmm. someone who is able to do different things uh, mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, rather than uh, the global platforms where, uh, or maybe employers in the global uh, space where they just basically are looking at specialists. Mm -hmm. So in Kenya, in Kenya, you find that you, you, you 
uh, an employer wants someone who can do content, mm -hmm. you can do graphic design, you can mm -hmm. do photography, you can do uh, search engine optimization, mm -hmm. can you do website analytics, uh, all of those things, then uh, you become more uh, qualified for a role. Mm -hmm. um, so, <coughs> excuse me, so I think uh, moving forward, uh, you need to be a specialist uh, in uh, in a specific area, mm -hmm. in a in a digital area, to make you more um, uh, more 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 good um, or more employable uh, to any any employer, or just basically, if you want to start uh, run, uh, running your business, your own mm -hmm. business, you have mm -hmm. to be at least good in one particular thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Versus just being a jack of all trades. Yes. Yes. Hey, guys, have you heard? It's important. Mm -hmm. It's important. Specify. You can know things, but be specific in your knowledge. Thank you kindly very much. Again, at Y54 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Why creatives? Why did you choose a, an industry that has this particular kind of resources? Why creatives? Um, you would remember at a certain point, mm -hmm. secretaries were essential in every office. Oh my goodness, yes. And it was a, like, such a big office. Yes. Like, yeah, you're doing secretary, I'm doing shorthand. Uh -huh. because, because at that time, businesses needed to write letters. Uh -huh. After, After secretaries, secretaries got work, work now, now there was another craze for accounting. Because uh -huh. now <laughs> the secretaries can get the work done, they can shuffle paper between the boss. And now clients come, work is coming in. Uh -huh. Now you need an accountant. And, and in every in home in Kenya, mm. ah, there, there has, has to be an accountant. Because mm -hmm. so many people have done CPA, 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 mm -hmm. CPA. Now that the accountant can put the money together, mm -hmm. as the business grows, you need to reach out to more clients. Mm -hmm. When you reach that stage, you realize who's going to do our communication, Gap. who's mm -hmm. going to do our signage, mm -hmm. who's going to do our newsletter. Mm -hmm. So the, the next, next person, person that you want, you want is a creative. Mm -hmm. So you realize businesses that reach out for a creative are in the infancy of their growth. And so by providing creative services, mm -hmm. Onesha is able to align mm -hmm. with businesses that are on the growth trajectory. Mm -hmm. So get, guess, guess what, what happens when they grow? They grow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You grow with them mm -hmm. because they're going to need more of your service mm -hmm. in the same way they needed it in the infancy. You're not going to stop needing a, uh, to have a graphic designer mm -hmm. or a content strategist or a media planner. Mm -hmm. So as different businesses grow, their need and appreciation for creativity deepens. Mm -hmm. And some stay with us uh, long, some uh, find another way of saying, hey, we're spending too much time on paying out creatives. Mm -hmm. Some decide to have an in-house. Ah, But uh -huh. even those that have an in-house, uh -huh. you may not have a, an editor in-house. So then you say, uh, okay, we'll have an in-house creative, but can we outsource the editing? Uh -huh. So because of social media, there's a big market for video editors. Uh -huh. Yes. Because you've got everybody with a mobile phone shooting mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. and some of it is actually very good, it just needs a bit more editing. Mm -hmm. So there's a new wave of uh, demand for video editors that is also in its infancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've got your video done, now you want copy. Mm -hmm. So copywriters, there are now a big demand for copywriters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes I don't want a human person. I want somebody who can draw. So then there's a market for illustrators. Mm -hmm. So Aligning in the creative industry is extremely very useful because it shows companies that require creative services are on the growth plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very articulate for a Chelsea fan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I threw shade. I threw shade very fast and we're going to move on. Hashtag is not What would you say, Christian, is your biggest challenge as a strategist? Um, I think uh, the biggest challenge, uh, mm. just as Kevin uh, has, uh, mentioned uh, earlier, mm. he said that uh, most, most clients will come to you uh, with an idea of what they want, and then uh, you end up uh, creating a whole strategy of uh, that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, once that uh, strategy pre is presented to them, then they will say, uh, 
no, uh, basically this is not what I was trying to get into. Mm -hmm. So most clients don't really have a clear uh, direction on what they really want. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, that's, uh, if they give you a direction of what they want, then it might not be a direction of uh, where the business is leading to. Mm -hmm. It might not be a direction of uh, a type of uh, a goal that the business uh, might need to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, or else you find that uh, sometimes a client uh, gives you some uh, business goals Mm -hmm. and they expect uh, social media or uh, digital strategies to be more like a miracle worker uh -huh. uh, for them. Uh -huh. So you expect uh, miracles within uh, one month mm -hmm. or two months, which uh, I think in the digital space, it takes uh, some time for you to uh, just do a lot of branding and to grow yourself out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 want to, I want to chip in. Chip. Clients need to understand mm -hmm growth happens in a curve mm -hmm. and what she has mentioned mm -hmm. a client is in its a client's business is, is in its infancy mm -hmm. but they want results of a mature uh, client mm -hmm. so there's another so if you're selling paint mm -hmm. You've only started selling paint today, mm -hmm. but then you're comparing yourself with a client who has been selling paint for 20 years mm -hmm. They have hundreds and thousands of customers. Mm -hmm. There are so many other things they have done. Mm -hmm. And then, sh like she's saying, they think if you post on Facebook for one month, you should get the orders that this other client got for 15 years. Like Steven, that one was posting. Why are we not getting You're like, Tangulin. Uliskia wapi. So... <laughs> <laughs> so now it becomes a headache for strategist mm -hmm. because she's constrained. Mm -hmm. You're like, could you then give me the resources mm -hmm. that would give us the time to nurture the audiences, mm -hmm. help the audiences create trust? Because mm -hmm. I saw you on Facebook. I, it doesn't mean I like you. Mm. I just saw you. Mm -hmm. I saw you on Facebook. It doesn't mean I trust you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not going to buy. Mm -hmm. So clients uh, sometimes misunderstand business takes time. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like you took a kid to nursery school, they learned the alphabet, mm -hmm. and you want them to write a composition. They can't. 500 words. They can't. <laughs> so all these businesses that are starting to use social media, mm -hmm. social media in Kenya is in its infancy. We are babies, mm -hmm. we are children, we are mm -hmm. playing around with a keyboard. Mm -hmm. We even don't know how to articulate our business objectives. Mm -hmm. We're just seeking attention. Oh, so and so did it. Oh, so let me also do it. Mm -hmm. But what is your purpose? And is your communication as a company aligned with your objective, mm -hmm. targeted to your uh, customers? Many people are getting in it wrong and strategies are having a very, very hard, hard time. time. You must be so diplomatic, Aki. <laughs> Gosh, you must be. <laughs> yes. I don't know if, if we're on the same page, but I, I see nowadays we, we have brand names. Instead of a lot, a long time ago, and not that long ago, if you wanted to advertise, you'd go on mainstream media. You'd go to radio stations, you'd go to TV stations. But now I'm seeing there's a new way to you approach an influencer. I see you have this number of people on social media. Do something. Do, if you're a comedian, be funny, but be funny with my brand. Is that a strategist behind that, saying, let's not go to TV, let's do this instead? Yes, uh, actually, uh, influencer marketing is part of uh, digital marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an area on itself. Uh, so uh, businesses, when uh, branching out, so you're looking at either do you need a micro-influencer, do you need uh, a nano-influencer who, who has uh, more uh, lower followers, mm -hmm. and a micro has higher followers. Mm -hmm. So business, some businesses will prefer to mix both. Others will prefer to just oh. go with the nanos only, mm -hmm. and others will uh, just, if you have the resources, you go with the micros only. Mm -hmm. So uh, both, both uh, micro and nano have different advantages. So you'd find that uh, some micro influencers will uh, be taking a lot of brands, mm -hmm. so they might have a lot of uh, branding messages from uh, maybe uh, different industries going out. Mm -hmm. So 
the, their followers might be finding it hard uh, to just follow up on what's, what's, uh, which brand to really be at. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they also have an advantage of uh, their message gets to reach a lot of uh, audiences, mm -hmm. potential audiences. Mm -hmm. And then they now know now they create a lot of engagement uh, mm -hmm. since they are now focused on the small areas. Oh. Yeah, so now you're able to... Um, D uh, directly or uh, uh, get a personal touch with mm -hmm. uh, some of uh, their followers. Because mm, I'd always wonder, like, yes, I can see there's this one with all the numbers and, you know, but there's also this person and they're not as prominent on social media, if I may, but you have both of them having some kind of, of product that they're ad advertising, for lack of a better term. Now, that, that's, that sounds like a woke person, a strategist. What happens if, if there's a brand or a company that is just not willing to start? Why do we need branding? Why is it we just, why can't we just keep it like it was before? Why do we have to do social media? Why do we have to spend more, more, more resources? Uh, <laughs> then, then it will just not uh, be known. I mean, the world has changed uh, right now. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, take. Uh, you can't just lay back and say you are. You're not going to be out uh, on social media or do any type of branding. Mm -hmm. uh, you just remain stagnant. Mm -hmm. So you need uh, to do a lot of branding to mm -hmm. just differentiate yourself uh, from other other brands in the mm -hmm. market. Uh, yeah, and just to uh, become. Uh, when, when you brand yourself, you're able to reach a, target, a targeted uh, uh, potential uh, customers mm -hmm. for, for your own um, services or type of products. Uh, and then now you're able to create that competition instead of just uh, being among, just being there without doing any, any type and of brand. Unless you're a monopoly. Yeah, and that's, that's the only reason you can be comfortable. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. You sound I, 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 wish to, <laughs> I wish to say, uh -huh. Uh, companies need to understand mm -hmm. um, uh, marketing is broad. Mm -hmm. Marketing is very broad. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, what becomes easy for people to do on social media, it's because people spend time on social media. Mm -hmm. But they also spend time elsewhere. So mm -hmm. you will probably be on social media for two hours, mm -hmm. but where will you be the rest of the time? Mm -hmm. So uh, brands therefore need to allocate budgets mm -hmm. to serve 360 degrees mm -hmm. relative to how much they can afford it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at established brands, mm -hmm. dude, they are on social media, but they're also on the billboard. Yes. Every time we go to Kisumu, mm -hmm. wall branding, for, forget Kisumu, mm -hmm. from the airport, mm -hmm. Jogorod, mm -hmm. People are doing wall branding. Why? Because wall branding is also a place where it's called out of home advertising. Mm -hmm. And so it is not fair for you to spend all your money on social media, ignore flyers, mm -hmm. ignore interactive experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some companies that do experiential marketing. So mm -hmm. if you're selling chocolate, I can see on social media, but if I tested the chocolate, mm. I would be sold out. Mm -hmm. Guys who are selling whiskey, mm -hmm. I want to see whiskey on social media, or do you want to taste whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're selling whiskey, uh -huh. which place in Kenya has a hot following for whiskey? Mm -hmm. You therefore go to social media to experiment. What mm whiskey -hmm. wako naivasha? Are they in Nakuru? Mm -hmm. Are they in Vihiga? Mm -hmm. Or are they in Kampala? Mm -hmm. So social media will help you with that insight. Mm -hmm. So if social media tells you whiskey lovers are in more than one place, mm -hmm. then you plan experiential marketing in mm -hmm. multiple places. So you use social media as a tool. Mm -hmm. Yes. That sounds like what I was just about to ask next. I don't know if it really does translate, but okay as a very just out the example key and OST, there's some adverts you will see westlands eh. westlands you may change i will i will see nashinski on the board All right. about johnny walker yes but to kenda is heading it together could transit to nenda is heading in it there are some things i will see for fresh and i have not seen in west how how do you pick and choose it do you do research now is that uh, sometimes it be it, it depends with availability uh so the people who've been in the billboard business they are hot spots mm -hmm. they are hot spots that are booked by blue chip companies for one year 
Oh. So, so therefore, by the time you, you have your budget for three months, cool. there are some spots that are not available because they're taken up by a blue chip company. Uh -huh. Yes. So the ones who take it for three months or less, uh -huh. they take the ones that are available. Uh -huh. Another thing, billboards are also sold out by different billboard companies. Uh -huh. So the one that you have uh -huh. is the one that your client has access to. Mm -hmm. Yes. So your client may not have access to the property across the road. So when you go to them and you say, I want a billboard, mm -hmm. they'll only give you the ones they have access to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, aren't we learning something today? Yes. Eh, yes. Hashtag is why in the morning. Okay, and maybe as we draw this into a conclusion, Christine, maybe I'll start with you. How, how would you explain to the layperson why marketing is so important? Why branding? <laughs> but we're out here trying to start a business whatever caliber is small or okay definitely has to be small first so if I'm trying to start something why is why is marketing myself so important okay um, marketing yourself is important uh, because uh, you need uh, to be seen uh, by a lot of people before you you convert any any people into your customers mm -hmm. so for example uh, there's a marketing book that actually says uh, back in the 90s you you needed to have ab about seven touch points mm -hmm. uh, before someone becomes your customer and those seven touch points uh, could mean then it was TV, radio, mm. uh, be on a newspaper, be on a flyer, or just be on a, on a stage somewhere, branding maybe wall, like he said. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, we need at least 21 plus touch points mm -hmm. before wow. uh, I become your customer. Mm. So if I have seen you on Facebook, it doesn't mean uh, mm -hmm when I see you next week again on Facebook, I'll become your customer. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I go to Instagram or I go to Twitter or I go to YouTube uh, while I'm watching my own videos and I see you, mm -hmm. uh, or I go just to do a search uh, online and then I see your website, then I'm able now to uh, create, uh, you see, creating that customer journey. Uh, just uh, from, we usually say there are actually three phases. Mm -hmm. uh, one phase is to create the awareness, mm -hmm. and then the second phase, uh, I'm creating consideration, mm -hmm. and then the third phase now it's for converting. So most most businesses should actually focus majorly on creating a lot of awareness, mm -hmm. so that now when it, you go. Uh, up or bottom the funnel, mm -hmm. then you're able to have an easier time when mm -hmm. uh, at the conversion phase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, become uh, maybe allocate a lot of resources in awareness, mm -hmm. and then create a lot of touch points across uh, all channels, mm -hmm. uh, both online and offline. Like mm -hmm. he said, billboards, um, uh, radio, TV, and then uh, now uh, once. Uh, all these customers are able to see you, then mm -hmm. uh, maybe at, at a, up to a point like six months or three months, mm -hmm. they're able to convert and become your, your customer, a potential customer. I'm, I'm super hooked on that word convert, convert because I probably was using Kevin's brand, but now you've come along with your brand, the same product, but you want me to start, stop using Kevin's, but you want me to... <laughs> there we go, there we go. Kevin, do you think we should have forums to sensitize clients? I'm like, yo, please. Handle your expectations, manage, manage, manage. We're doing our best. Do you think we should? Um, Is it possible? It's, it's an, an exciting, exciting time, time to be alive. Mm -hmm. And it's an exciting time to have the tools we have at our disposals. Mm -hmm. And as young people, we have a significant challenge. We think the only boundary that matters is Kenya. Wow. We need to wake up uh -huh. and find out Malawi is a market, wow. Zimbabwe is a market, uh -huh. Kampala is waiting for you, uh -huh. Benin. Hey. When was the last time you had a conversation with somebody from Mauritius? And uh -uh. why are you not? Uh -uh. Why are you listening to only one radio station? Uh -huh. You can listen to a radio station from Singapore and get business news that will change your perspective about what you're doing in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. It's possible for you to be in Donholm. And, and serving a market in Canada, Canada. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an exciting time to be alive. Mm -hmm. And as young people, we must work together. Mm -hmm. Yes, I need you. Mm -hmm. Because 
If, if I, I want, want to access, access the Canadian, Canadian market, market, you have a cousin, cousin in Toronto. Mm-hmm. So you will be helping me uh, understand how I can do whatever it is I'm doing from the Canadian part. So we need each other. Mm-hmm. And the people who are out of Africa, they're also coming into Africa. Mm-hmm. So we need to brand ourselves as Africans. Mm-hmm. Yes, because Africa is the largest market Mm -hmm. and will continue to be a very big market for anything that you're offering. Mm -hmm. So don't be blinded by your nationality. Your nationality is good when you're voting. Mm -hmm. But after you finish voting, you're a citizen. Wisdom. Wisdom. That is not the answer as I expected, but it is definitely the answer I needed. Thank you so very much, Christine and Kevin, for coming. We have to wrap that up for right now. The show is not over. We'll be having Brian Sacco 101 coming in up next. Please do not forget to interact with us on our social media handles. Hashtag remember is why in the morning.